Greetings to all at NCAF, and it is a pleasure to take part in the festival. Plant trees for a brilliant future. Soroptimus International, 100 year anniversary, bright past, brilliant future. This is a short presentation by Catherine Bunch, Program Action Coordinator, and myself, Leila Coleman. Let's um, look at uh, Soroptimus as an international global volunteer movement. They promote the interests of women and girls through various channels, educate, empower, enable. So how did all of this happen and what does it mean? Deriving its name from the Latin Sora, S-O-R-O-R, -O -R, meaning sister, woman, and optima meaning best, Soroptimus is interpreted as the best for women. Now let's look at the start of the um, Soroptimus. How did it all come about? In Oakland, California, Stuart Morrow, a professional organizer of men's service clubs, wanted a secretarial college. To his amazement, he found at his head a woman. This meeting and subsequent discussions with Violet Richardson of Berkeley led to the launching of the first Soroptimist Club on the 3rd of October, 1921. 100 years ago, the first project. One of the major project, projects undertaken by the Oakland Club concerned the environment with legislative advocacy to save the redwoods, these great ancient trees which were being felled unmercifully. Sir Optimus lobbied the legislature, took on the powerful lumber companies and gained public support for the project. The result was that the major portion of the redwoods was set aside in a protected reserve and <coughs> if it, it still stands today. What a wonderful thing to happen. The giant redwood is the most, is the world's most massive tree by volume. This early action set the precedent for future Sir Optimus involvement in legislative advocacy and its subsequent relationship with the United Nations and its forerunner, the League of Nations. Now, this wasn't the only environmental project, um, but several projects followed that one. And if I may, um, hope I've got some time, just talk about the friendship garden. Whilst environmental issues were not considered as great a pro problem as perhaps they are in the 1990s and now, many projects in this area have been undertaken. Since the, Redwood, since the Oakwood Club first saved the redwood trees, one such project germinated in the minds of two members from Thunder Bay, Ontario, following a visit to the Peace Gardens in Salt Lake City. In Fort William, Ontario, where a baseball field had remained unused and become an eyesore, the SI Club of Thunder Bay believed that the field could be transformed into an international friendship garden. The aim was to make the garden representative of all ethnic groups that composed the population of the city and to offer it as a centennial gift to Canada in 1967. Other clubs took up the idea. So you can see the international um, way that Disruptimists um, have on uh, uh, celebrate and work. Now, um, Catherine, would you like to take over? Yes, thank you, Leila. Um, since the founding of the first Sir Optimist Club in the USA, Sir Optimism has spread throughout the world. At the moment, there's a network of around 72 club members in 3,000 clubs in 121 countries. 
Sir Optimist International of Great Britain and Ireland was founded shortly after the one in the USA in 1923. In 1924, uh, a further club was set up in Paris. Both these clubs joined with the America one in becoming Sir Optimist International in 1928 and each formed a federation. So by 1928, we had the Sir Optimist Federation International of the Americas, Sir Optimist International of Great Britain and Ireland, and Sir Optimist International of Europe. It wasn't until 1978 that the Federation of the Southwest Pacific was formed and became part of Sir Optimist International. Clubs in that area had flourished, but had belonged either to Great Britain and Ireland, Sir Optimist International or Europe. It was only last year that Sir Optimist Federation of International Africa was formed. So today we have five Sir Optimist Federations spread globally each working with the aim of improving the lives of women and girls globally. Just to continue a little with the history of the Hundred Years, the Sir Optimists became very well known by their volunteer work and the projects, particularly those that they undertook in World War II, when globally, but particularly in uh, Great Britain, and Europe, volunteer work in the Second World War involved working in canteens, setting up first aid centres, and in fact, the Sir Optimist International Great Britain was instrumental in helping members of SI Vienna escape from Nazi persecution to Britain and the USA. So at the end of the war and the growth of Sir Optimism, they, we were so well regarded that Sir Optimist International was offered consultative status, first at UNESCO in 1948, and then full consultative status at uh, the Economic and Social Council and at the United Nations from 1966. And this continues to be the case. And we are consulted on issues concerning women and particularly children. Sir Optimists call all our activities at local, national and international level program action. I'm the program action coordinator for the Enfield Club. All our activities are intended to be grouped under the UN's five Ps, and they are people, proster proster prosperity, sorry, planet, peace and partnership. Quite tongue twisters, those. Um, planet, of course, is the one that's most concerning and is becoming more important in our movement as we consider climate change and climate action. Oops, one more. <laughs> that's right. Um, I'm just going to give you a few samples of Sir Optimist International projects linked to planet. Um, these are SI President's Appeals, and these are biannual appeals that are shared among all the federations. In 1984, with the United Nations, the Women's Apple Market Project planted trees and refined the whole system of women in Ghana being able to sell their apples, make a living, and it improved their lives economically. Uh, considerably. The trees also uh, uh, were a big advantage that's been recognised since. In 1993, again with the United Nations Unifem, um, Sir Optimist set up schemes to train women in India in sustainable aquaculture so that they're able to fish and provide for themselves in terms of food security uh, and, and also um, earn and have an occupation 
that, that gave them economic means of supporting their families. In 2013, uh, a project called Sea Solar, Cook Solar, um, Seroptimist fundraised and some Seroptimist worked on the ground supplying solar projects to women for cooking and lighting purposes. This was in the countries that are named here where many women were unable to provide for their family via cooking. Um, so these products were enormously important to them, as well as starting in that country, uh, the idea of providing heating and light, lighting through means of the sun. In 2017, the project was Women Water Leadership, and this created opportunities, education, technology for women uh, to lead, to take a lead in all the countries worldwide to ensure water security for women and, and their families. I'm gonna hand you over to Leila, who's going to tell you a little bit about the specific projects that SI Enfield and District have been involved in, which involve the environment. The SI Enfield and District projects it's a, just a sample I'm going to give, which um, is on based on the environment. First of all, is say no to plastic bags. This was done some years ago, um, before it was fashionable, I think. Tap into water aid. That raised um, quite a bit of money, about 2,000 pounds, and uh, to build wells in developing countries. Reduce, reuse, recycle. And um, I think we also sent some money to Sri Lanka when there was a tsunami uh, some years ago. That was quite a good sum of money as, as well. And um, there are many more projects, but we've only picked out some of the environmental ones. The latest project which um, we were involved in uh, was, is the planting mangroves, March 2021. SIN field sent about 150 pounds to help develop the community forest mangrove project with SI Kolkata, India. With that money, they planted 1,042 mangrove saplings. And this is a very important um, way to, to prevent um, or to, to help what is going on against the climate. We had a lovely thank you letter, and I would like to read that letter. It's dear Miss Alder, Trisha is our treasurer. Thank you so much for your generous contribution to the mangrove plantation. We at SI South Kolkata feel indebted to you and thank you from the bottom of our hearts. These mangroves will go a long way in the rebuilding of the mangrove forest of the Sundarbans Delta at the head of the Bay of Bengal. Mangroves help to minimize the ravages of cyclonic damage, among other things. Yours in friendship, Sukla Chattopadhyay. Just gives you a flavor of the international relationship um, among women and others that Seroptimus um, has and how it has evolved and still going strong. So Leila's already mentioned, and you'll be aware that if the first club started in 1921, then 2021 is the centenary. And we've produced this banner with the slogan, Bright Past and a brilliant future to come. As uh, a means of celebrating our centenary, clubs all over the world have been asked to plant trees, to undertake a tree project to celebrate Sir Optimus International's 100 years. As of the 1st of September, 65,490 trees had been planted worldwide. This has increased by a further 6,000 today, and we're aiming for 100,000 uh, by the end of this year. You'll see 
the redwoods that Layla talked about, there's a tree that's st obviously still standing in these great forests, um, being hugged by, well, it, it looks like a possible future, Sir Optimist looks quite young, but this is our future. Um, we are always looking to uh, recruit new Sir Optimists. And at the end of our presentation, if anyone would be interested, we'll give a telephone number for our membership secretary. To end, Leila would like to read a relevant poem. Well, as Catherine says, forward 100 years, 1921 to 2021 is our centennial year. Little quote, though a tree grows so high, the fallen leaves return to the root. And I'd like to read a poignant verse from the Sir Optimist Symphony. If I can answer freedom's call, striving to be a friend to all, if I can love for my own land, yet to far shores hold out my hand, then fellowship I'll truly share. When for the whole world, wide world I care, and I will know it's fine and free, so optimist to be. Thanks. Now we in fact move on uh, to look at how the members of the Sir Optimist Club of Enfield uh, were looking at how to celebrate the 100 years of Sir Optimism. At one of our meetings back in October 2020, as we were discussing what we could do and how and where we might be able to plant trees for the centenary, one of our members suggested we could have a conversation with a local artist she knew, working on a tree project in Liverpool, which might interest us. So now I pass over to you, Justine. The artist that I said to talk to was, is called Joe Robinson. He's been a resident of over 20 years. He's a Northern artist who has worked on a whole host of art projects up and down the country. He specialises in creating a range of public art, much of it sculpture and three-dimensional work. He also creates everything from life-sized aircraft to bronze and sheet metal sculptures. From temporary environmental art and bespoke private commissions to a mile long public sculpture trail. Working with the arts company Tiger Monkey UK, Joe Robinson was lead artist on a huge multiple art form project working in Edmonton, London. Work included large scale public participation with a range of environmental sculptures and a mile long sculpture trail made with 100 cast aluminium pieces. The finished product was described by Arts Council England as a brilliant project. Other works include a variety of strange and unusual environmental art, public murals, hidden artworks and participatory activity. Perhaps most exciting of all of his public art practice is fire sculpture, forming fascinating and hugely popular artworks which are then burnt. Joe was artist in residence as part of the 10 million refurbishment of the 17th century Forty Hall. Working with local people, the residency resulted in a series of large banners which were hung in the main stairway of the building. I met Joe many years ago when he worked with me as part of the New River Festival. Joe was commissioned to produce art workshops for the public on the theme of the festival. Joe, as well as working with the Seroptimist, is currently engaged in a regeneration project in Morecambe Bay. This has been an ongoing engagement in one of the poorest parts of the country and seeks to provide opportunities for those who live, work and visit the area, giving them ways of expressing themselves. As an artist, Joe works tirelessly to find opportunities through funding to work with all sorts of people. His love of the art shines through many of the wonderful projects he has devised or worked within, bringing his knowledge and enjoyment to a wider audience. So 
Joe introduced the club to a project that he was undertaking in Liverpool, which involved the planting of trees to commemorate members of the community who had died during the pandemic. The Sir Optimist Club of Enfield saw this as a very special and meaningful opportunity to plant trees in Enfield, whilst providing a place where individuals and families could go over the years to acknowledge and reflect on the loss of loved ones. At the same time, for the people of Enfield, where hundreds have been lost during the pandemic, it would provide a public place where we can all reflect on the feelings we share as a community. The intention has, was to work with a number of community partners. So initially a small working group was set up. The first task was to identify a name for the project. Ultimately the name chosen was the Enfield Living Memorial. Then, over several months, every park in Enfield was checked with the help of the Enfield Parks Department to see if the park was suitable for the Living Memorial based on a number of agreed criteria. These included suitable space for the memorial. Was there a big enough area available for all the trees? Could people access the site by public transport and by car? And was there access to parking? We considered the distance to walk within the park from the entrance to the memorial, especially for the disabled. The availability of toilets and places for refreshments nearby was another important issue. Finally, the park selected, meeting the majority of the criteria, was Enfield Town Park, which is also at the heart of the borough of Enfield. This artist's impression of what the memorial will look like as the trees grow to maturity shows that the memorial will have 30 trees planted in the shape of a heart at its widest, some 30 metres across. There will be three or four different trees suitable to the park, its environment and the land conditions. In time, a sculpture will be placed at its centre in the form of a phoenix, a symbol of both loss and renewal. But before that is put in place, the intention is to have some form of ceremony where a fire sculpture will be burnt, marking the completion of the memorial. This plan gives a clearer indication of the position of the memorial within Enfield Town Park. As you can see, it is across from the cafe and near the New River. It shows the heart shape, and the position of the final sculpture. Here are some of the Sir Optimists, including our current president on the left, with a banner advertising the memorial. They are facing the cafe and have their backs towards the area where the memorial will be positioned. To be able to complete the project, we are now reliant on the people of Enfield providing funding for the memorial. As you can see, the estimated budget is between 10 and 15,000 pounds, which needs to be raised. This amount is to cover the cost of the trees, the planting of the trees, the maintenance and watering for the first three years until the root systems have grown sufficiently to access water, the fire sculpture, and of course the final permanent metal sculpture. We really want everyone in Enfield to feel that it is their memorial. So every donation, whether one pound or 100 pounds, is of equal value. 
because it will all help create this community memorial. If you want to help, simply make a contribution via the website address on the screen or Google Sigby Enfield and it will come up. At the donation page, you will find the bank details to pay in by bank and a link to PayPal to donate by credit card or by your PayPal account if you have one. We hope that this living memorial will provide some form of support to the many people of M Enfield who have lost someone special to them during the pandemic. And now I move to, back to Justin, who has news of a project going on at this moment in time. As we are all aware, sustaining our current lifestyles is not possible for us or the future generations of this planet to come. We and so many others are having to rethink and retrain the way we live, shop and travel. And it's one of the hottest conversations we're having as humans. Like many associations, communities, mm -hmm. groups and schools, St Anne's High School for Girls in Enfield want to do their bit towards creating a better future and environment. The girls identified that they wanted to create a group to discuss how the school could make subtle changes and help, help the girls make a difference. So they created the SEAT St Anne's Eco Warriors. As a member of staff at St Anne's and a member of the Soroptimists, I felt there was an opportunity for us to work together. And so I asked their teaching representative what they were interested in doing and about changes they had already made. She said, my wonderful, enthusiastic eco warriors are this year very focused on creating an eco garden with vegetable patches on the lower site in Enfield. They have so many wonderful and imaginative ideas and are extremely keen to get involved and get started. We have over the last two years focused on reducing paper waste as a whole school by putting recycle bins in every classroom. We now have plastic bins in the playground so students can correctly recycle their plastic bottles. The school has purchased new water fountains and school water bottles which help to reduce the amount of plastic bought and encourages students to reuse and reduce. After hearing their plans, I felt the Soroptimists could help with their garden aspirations by setting the group a competition to design the garden with a prize of funding for some supplies as well as helping them to get donations for equipment. The garden has already been given a green bin which is currently being filled with the kitchen waste from the girls' food tech classes and insect homes which have been hung on the wall. You can see that these insect homes are logs with holes drilled in them. And at the bottom, you can see the beginnings of a pile of uh, logs for larger insects and animals to winter. The competition will ask the girls to include a wildflower patch, perennial herb bed, and fruit and vegetables that will fit into the school yearly timetable so that watering and harvesting can be done in term time. For many children, this will make planning and designing a much more in-depth undertaking, as many plants flourish and fruit through the summer period when the girls are on holiday. But this being said, we feel that St Anne's Eco Warriors are ever resourceful and are fit for the challenge.